motorcycle adventure Dirt Bike TV, supported proudly by Adventure Spec in the UK, Rally Raid Products, Giant Loop in the United States, Adventure Moto in Australia, Pirelli Tyres, Motel Oils, RK Chains and Australian Adventure Bike Magazine. introduction for a deserving, stylish and capable bike. The Husqvarna Norden 901 has recently hit the shores of Australia and a bike that looks this good deserves a classy introduction. The bike's classic adventure lines turn heads. The stylists have nailed it and for many riders it unleashes a desire to be on this bike and ride it and it will challenge existing brand loyalties. But there's a substance behind this style. This bike has an undeniable dirt heritage that makes its presence felt as soon as you hit the rough stuff. In this test, we find ourselves disagreeing with the Husqvarna marketing pitch that promotes this bike as an adventure tourer. As you would expect, we take this bike to its design limits and on that journey gain a clear understanding of what it will take to make this bike an exceptional adventure mount. We also ride what could be described as the ultimate Norden, a bike sporting 270mm WP Pro suspension, a $9,000 option that takes this bike to another level. I'm heading northwest of Sydney on a 400km loop to test the credentials of the Husqvarna Norden 901. I'm taking it to a place that's pretty important to me, a convict road that I discovered when I was exploring at the ripe old age of 14. The Great Old North Road was built by convicts in the late 1820s and stretches for over 240 kilometres. It was this discovery that ignited my passion for motorcycle adventure. Well, good morning. Time to take this baby on a decent couple of hundred kilometre loop, probably up to 400 k's. First thing to do is to fill her up. One thing I'm noticing with the Nordens is they're very economical. And uh, on freeway I'm getting about 3.8 litres per hundred kilometres. And when I start giving it a bit of stick, and I'll be frank, in the mud I haven't been able to give it too much. Um, it's getting up around 4.5. So today will be a good test for fuel economy in the real world. <coughs> because what we normally do in Australia is drive down a freeway, then get onto some blacktop, and then ultimately get to the dirt. 30 bucks in it. It had 70 k's range before. So that's about right, 15 litres. The tank's, I think, 20 litres. Mm. 
Now, this is a bit I don't like, but it's got to be done to get out of the city. Yeah, the Husky takes on that dual sporter role very well. I mean, that combination of that beautiful engine that pulls from nothing and if you want to get going, you just rev it a bit harder, but basically it's a linear power. And then you've got the quick shifter to just snick it into the next gear as you're moving through the city traffic. Yeah, I'd have to say, you know, it's a very comfortable bike for this sort of sort of riding. The seated position is good, you're upright, and the seat, I've spent hours upon hours in this seat, and it's very comfortable. So yeah, it's a good, a good bike, a good dual sporter, a solid dual sporter. You know, okay, city traffic's a pain in the backside, but, you know, it's very hassle-free on this bike. Adventure Touring. That's the brief for this bike. I've turned off the freeway to get a taste of twisty blacktop and I'm not disappointed. The bike effortlessly tips into corners and feels agile but planted. The engine power is ideal for this sort of riding. The bike is flexible and willing to either amble along or turn into a cafe racer. Between three and five thousand revs, the effortless torque of the engine makes you smile. But push it to the six thousand to eight thousand rev range and gobs of horsepower is unleashed that pulls your cheeks back to your ears. But the icing on the cake is the easy shifter that makes gear changing lightning fast and takes full advantage of that thick, talky power delivery. Acceleration can be mind-blowing. The Pirelli Rally STRs meet the brief of Adventure Tourer and offer good grip on the tar with no irritating whining road noise. Just about to arrive at Jerry's Cafe with some scrambled eggs and chocolate milk. So for the past hour I've been doing freeway speeds. You know, they label this Husqvarna an adventure tourer and it's at a price point where most of its competitors have adjustable windshields and Husqvarna don't on this model. So yeah, it's giving me a bit of vibration. It's low level vibration. But you know, I, I would expect that shouldn't be the case. We're heading up into the bush here, just make sure we don't get run over. Now, I'm just going to turn it into explorer mode, so motorcycle, ride mode, street, rain, off-road, explorer, it's in explorer mode now. The throttle is already on off-road and ABS mode is already on off-road. I'm uh, just trying to think of which way I'll go here. Anyway, I've got slip control on three at the moment. This bike eats up these miles like spaghetti on toast. It just, you know, it's made for this sort of stuff. You know, moving along these wider trails. When I was a young bloke, I was about 14 and I came to this location. It's, so it's very special to me. It's the beginning of the Great North Road uh, up the Colnura end. And, you know, it's the first time I 
was genuinely exploring with bikes and this was a big deal for me to get here you know imagine 14 didn't bring any tools brought some spare fuel no water not even a packet of snakes so imagine as a 14 year old boy coming here and finding his first convict viaduct it's amazing, you know, it's built hundreds of years before. You can see the hand craftsmanship of every rock. I'll never forget, you know, it's like yesterday that I sat here and, and looked at that. And then I continued down this road all the way to Wiseman's Ferry. You can't do it now, the road's closed and it's a, a full-on national park. It's nice to come back here with the Norden. But to get here, you know, there's a, a few tricky bits and a few technical bits. And if I was to listen to that, if you like, the, the marketing of the Norden too much, I wouldn't go here because they say it's an adventure tour. And they're selling the bike short. Yeah, these bikes can do the technical stuff. They're far more capable. But I think one thing this rock drop-off highlights is you've just got to take it slow. Just a little bit slower. If I launch off this half-heartedly, yeah, the uh, rear suspension just falls through the stroke. But let's go back and do it again. And just take your time and everything's fine. Traction control is now off. My God, it accelerates great. <laughs> Coming into some sand here and it cuts it like a knife. This is a relatively smooth trail that I'm familiar with. But even with that knowledge and having the rear preload adjuster wound up to the max, the bike is still falling through the stroke on short sharp hits. There's a couple of decent jumps along the way and I think at this stage I'm letting the bike out of the adventure tour a closet and allowing it to express its true dirt heritage. The bike's engineering roots are the KTM 890 Adventure R, a no holes barred dirt oriented mid sized adventure bike. I feel the Norden has been unfairly shackled to a far more conservative, less dirt oriented path because the rear shock absorber is of too low a specification. And that's a pity because for what I want to do with this bike, the front forks are doing just fine. On a medium sized adventure bike at this price point, most of the competition have compression damping. It really is essential for how this bike will be ridden in Australia, the United States and South Africa where riding conditions are tougher and riders generally ride their bikes harder off-road than in Europe. The lower specification rear shock is the chink in the armour of what otherwise is a stunning looking bike with performance and handling to match. But for me right now on this track at this speed the rear shock is holding out and for many riders, they'll be happy with its performance. An extreme and prolonged weather event on the east coast of Australia has turned what were fast flowing tracks into challenging obstacle courses. Deep mud puddles, erosion ruts and slippery clay that takes the Pirelli Rally STRs beyond their design limits. 
The front wheel is feeling dodgy in these conditions and I long for my Pirelli Rally Scorpions, particularly the front tyre that would eat up these conditions and give me confidence. The thing about Slip Control 5 in these really greasy conditions is it just makes life easier. It, 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 like, it makes the putting down power manageable. Uh, it's a wonderful addition to this bike. Oh, well, go to the left. Oh, staller. Oh, down. Through. Up. Up. Whoa. Gee, that's slippery. This is a great thing, you know. Like, it's just got an agility to it. Low center of gravity. You know, you can really do this tough stuff slowly. You know, and slow exploration, and you get through. Excellent ground clearance, low center of gravity, the magical 21 18 inch wheel combination a generous torquey engine that usefully pulls from 2000 revs in the really slow stuff and a clutch with great feel and finally a low seat height these are the features that matter when you've got to do that slow difficult stuff i'm going to say it again this bike isn't an adventure tourer it's got far more to give to the dirt oriented adventure rider got a lot of things going for it for you know when you have to go slow and you know most adventure riders fall over when they're going slow hmm another little challenge mm. yeah oh got it we're out through that Whoa. I think I'll... This is so slippery, I've got myself into a really slippery clay situation. So I'm going to take uh, slip control up to five. And, oh, Jesus. <clears throat> this is where I want my scorpions. Dave, if you're listening, Come down from the skies and give me my rally scorpions, will you? <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes adventures like this, you get stuck in stuff like this. And I'm on slip control five. Yep, we're out. Right. Oh, up the slip control to nine. Got to get on the pegs. Yeah, I'm on the pegs. Engine's going well in this. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on little doggy. Dave, you're still laughing? I know you're there. Someone's stuck. Yeah, we don't want to be next. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Now this is the beauty of this bike. If I can't get up here, I'm confident I can lift it up. 
No, I got up there. <laughs> Stuck. All right. And so I finished this 400 kilometer loop, adventure touring. But we all know this bike has done a lot more today than just tour. I'm heading home with a strong appreciation of what this bike is about. And despite my focus on its KTM heritage, this bike is very different from its KTM cousins. And it goes way beyond styling. Yes, the traditional styling of the Norden certainly leaves this rider less exposed to the elements but there are subtle changes in steering head angle and wheelbase length that draw this bike towards a slightly more road orientation and refined cornering on the blacktop. Yeah, so we've banged out some kilometres today and um, you know, the bike is just so comfortable be it seated or in the standing position. I'm loving this long fuel range. For Australian riders, it's a key feature that's appreciated, particularly in the outback. I've successfully returned home from my 400 kilometre loop on one tank of petrol, and I've got 40 kilometres of range left. The bike averaged 4.3 litres per 100 kilometres for this loop, that consists of roughly 200 k's of freeway and tar, and 200 k's of dirt. A word of caution, I wouldn't count on that range if you were going hard in the dirt and I'd be hunting around for fuel around the 320k mark. This 19 litre tank is a little smaller than its KTM cousins. The improvement in the bike's appearance for a little reduction in fuel range is worth it. Today, Clubby and I are heading out on a pair of Nordens, but the one I'm riding is very different to the standard bike. It's sporting a set of WP Pro forks and rear shock and has 270 mils of travel front and rear. That's a heap more suspension than the standard bike. The WP upgrade costs 9,000 Australian dollars, and I can hear you all going, geez, that's a lot of money. Well, at the risk of a spoiler alert, take a look at this slow motion shot at 100 frames per second. It's nothing short of incredible how this suspension soaks up that hit. I'll play it at normal speed first. It's one of those typical root covered tracks with one root a little higher and sharper. With normal suspension, you'd certainly feel that through the handlebars. But with WP, it magically soaks it up. Anyway, that's enough of the teasers. Let's get on with the story. Hear the commotion, and that's okay. We're in motion, I can feel the sway. There's nothing to fear, my friend. Oh no, it's the natural road out of. Time for some scrambled eggs at Jerry's Cafe. That's what I need. God, don't tell me we're the first customers. The dogs are there. My dogs. We're up. Time for some breakfast, Clubby. Yeah, standing position on the bike is excellent. Um, it's perfect for me. I did notice there's a heap of adjustment there to move the handlebars forward for taller riders. I'm, I'm pretty confident most people would find, you know, the barred distance that they want if they're a bit taller 
or even shorter, he can bring it closer to you as well. One of the things we've got to watch here today is there's been a truckload of rain again. So there's been a number of flooding events one after the other so they've done some road work and then and then all their road work particularly blue metal gravel has been washed away again and that's important when you get to these little crossings because they could be a lot deeper than what you think for example this first one <laughs> oh well clubby's first I just don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going to get wet feet. I, th I think I'm going to get wet feet. This is the one I was talking about. So we had one flood event. They filled it up with blue metal because it went down this deep. So I'm going to have to get wet feet. So I hope you appreciate Chloe. I'm taking it for the team. Yeah. Oh, hang on, we'll have a look. That that looks better than I thought it was. I mean, it got washed out before. Yeah. It's still a bit rough on the bottom, but... No, that's all right. I think we'll go on the right. Thanks for that, mate. I was either going to do that or walk it. Good mate, thanks so much. Yeah, this was a lot deeper the other day. He, he saved my boots. Here we go. As the track gets rougher, Clubby's trail speed naturally drops. He's found the limits of the suspension. And on the other hand, for me, on the W Pro suspension, it's time for some fun. It raises the dirt capability of the Husky dramatically. It's certainly pushing it towards the feel of a big motocrosser. Roots, ruts, erosion mounds, it takes on those challenges easily. And it allows you to be more carefree with line selection, but also deals with the small stuff well. Here's a section of track covered in roots. I'll follow that footage with a decent erosion mount jump. The suspension soaks up those very different challenges equally as impressively. But for a large proportion of adventure riders, speed and in fact dirt handling isn't that important. Well, until they hit a deep pothole or sharp rut. Suspension on adventure tourers needs to be able to cope with the unexpected. Now it's time for Clubby and I to switch bikes. I'm returning to the standard suspension with the travel of 220 mils for the front and 215 for the rear. But it's not the length of travel I'll be focusing on. It's that compression damping of the rear shock that came to my notice the other day. Clubby's trail speed has certainly increased. Yeah, both bikes do sand really well. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, I just got a bit of air there and I didn't fall through the stroke or anything. Yeah. It's certainly a bit firmer in the stroke. I'd suggest this is a typical adventure tour a track that many who purchase this bike would ride. The Norden with standard suspension does have a harsher feel, even on this relatively smooth trail. That said, I've just got off a bike with a top of the range suspension valued at $9,000. You don't need to be Einstein to work that out. But the forks are working fine and the rear shock is doing okay. I feel comfortable on the bike and the handling is good but I wonder how it would perform with a heavier rider or loaded up with camping gear. Time to head home and complacency gets the better of me 
and nearly ends in disaster. Time to take these Nordens for a swim. The other day with Nick. I'll go first. Don't go. Go to the left. Follow me. Fucking hell. got a hole where it didn't used to have a hole. Yeah. We were lucky to get through that. I, I, it seemed for me and I thought I fucking followed your line precisely. Yeah, no, I went down a hole that wasn't there the other day. Where are you going out? <laughs> I think we'll go out this way now. Did you do that the other day? Were they deeper down the other end? Oh, well, that's a good point. Fucking hell. That was a fucking The problem is, as we'll find out very soon, is the next crossing is actually deeper. The only way back for us was to go back from the way we came. Yeah, well... Oh, mate, it's just keep happening. Well, we can do one or two things. Turn around. Turn around. Good, that's all I need to hear. And go back the way we came and hope to God. Pick the same line through that fucking last one, mate. Yeah. Oh. Holy shit. My woofer valve is going like this, mate. Mate. And it's wet. <laughs> that's yeah, deep, mate. That was oh, but over front wheel, not up to the base of the headlight and fairing, but that is You deep. were deeper than that. I know. I, I had it coming up over into my lap, mate. Yeah, I was watching the water come up over, over through, up. Yeah, around the steering head and over. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember, like, that's where Nick and I went to the left. Yeah. Well, Nick, if you're watching, mate, that's got a lot deeper. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading home and after all those dirt miles, it's great to take the Nordens on some twisty tar. The Nordens love the twisties. Time for Clubby and I to reflect on the day and how the bikes performed. So Clubby, I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to do the Norden 901 test. And finally we're on the bikes. It's the first time it hasn't rained in months and uh, we've been out in it. Mind you, we had a close call with a river crossing. Yes. And what a wonderful engine for sneaking through the suburbs and cruising around the city when you have to do that. Yep. You just sneak it through the gears with the quick shifter yep. and um, it does that perfectly. Yeah. You get out on the highway and uh, it just sits there. I love uh, the way the cruise yeah. control activation yeah. Yeah. and just being able to turn yeah. it up and down. Yeah. And these illuminated uh, switch blocks, they're yep. brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all, all that's great. Yeah, but I think also the motor, it, it's like talky around town, isn't it? You can yes. ride it a gear high, easy yeah. like that. But then when you get out, like we've done today, out in the dirt, and you want to hold gears, you want to get up higher in the range, it goes, doesn't it? And yes. keeps pulling, oh, God, just yeah. just like a KDM does. Like we yeah. say that all the time, we're always comparing it to the 890. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's a versatile motor. 
I yes. think is, is a really good word for this machine. Now handling on the on the stand and the stock bike, clearly there's a suspension difference between this uh, this bike and that. Uh, the the suspension on this costs about nine thousand dollars Australian. So you know this is top of the range suspension. But let's talk about the standard bike for a while. I mean you were clipping along in those dirt trails, and you know yeah you had to be cautious of the line you took. Yep. But at the end of the day the fundamental handling of the bike with the 21 inch front, the low center of gravity, fuel weight low, um, you know, wheelbase spot on, mm. like it actually handles the dirt really well. It, 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 it does, I agree with, with all of that. And what was really good for me today was to get onto some wet dirt. And then I think it, it really became the tires that were yeah. the limiting factor, especially the front tire yeah. on some of that greasy clay that we had today. And it would just send you into a into a little rain rut and wash and you just had to ride that out yeah you know whereas i noticed on the on the longer suspended bike yeah. you had better suspension to be able to get up and over those yeah. kind of obstacles but just to talk about the stock bike yeah. you know it, it's it's a soft compliant comfortable suspension setup is how i summarize what the bike is yeah with the apex the standard components i'll i'll enhance your description and say you can jump a little bit i mean that's a you know, I, I could get about six inches off the ground and, and, and land and there wasn't a problem. But, you know, this is, this is not a, a dirt-oriented adventure bike to, to, the, to the next level, you know, the jumping like the adventure are. But having said that, it's very capable. But I did come to the limits of the suspension and, and we did that deliberately to work out where yeah, it sure. sat. Yeah. And when you really push that suspension... Um, I noticed the rear falling through the stroke. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and you'll notice the belly grounding out too. Yes. The underbelly, like the ground clearance, you know. It, it's, you just go through the suspension and you've got no more. That's what yes. happens, isn't it? Yeah. And that's where you less learn to write. That's your gauge. That's your dial, yeah. isn't it? Just you know, slow That's down. your barometer. Yeah. Just slow down. That's exactly right, mate. But then exactly. you flip back to the dirt handling. And, yep. you know, when we were doing some deep sand there, it does sand beautifully. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, look, it does have... Pirelli STRs, which are a dual purpose tyre. Mm -hmm. I mean, normally you and I ride with Pirelli Rallies, yep. uh, Rally Scorpions, with a little bit more grip in the dirt. Yeah. Um, that would have been interesting had you had a Scorpion on the front. Yeah. Um, probably would have tracked better in that slippery clay. Yes, yeah, for sure it would have, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it, it's it's just a, it's, you know, I, I can see where this bike is coming from, and suspensions are real, it's, it's, it's in my mind, it's the biggest factor for Australian riders yes. with this bike. Yeah. Compared to, you know, the obvious comparison is always with the Cato 890. Be, yeah. The suspension is going to be the question on everybody's minds. Yes. And I think what's been fortunate today, uh, and certainly for this review, yeah. is to have the other yes. optionalised, accessorised, white power kitted, yeah. 270 mil cone valve technology fork yeah. uh, to compare against. Yeah. And as you say, it's big dollars, but it's, it's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah, it, ta it takes this bike um, to another level because the foundation of that dirt heritage, uh, it just builds upon that foundation. And, um, mm. you know, as you'll see from the video, like I'm regularly getting air, the bike is landing perfectly, yeah. it's mm. got great poise. But again, this bike with this suspension on it is, is the value of a KTM 890 Rally. That's, around, that's the, around the same price, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. Right. Okay, let's have a talk about the access to the riding modes. That seems to be a lot simpler and more direct than it has been um, on, on the KTM models. Like, yeah. it, it seems you just come through it. It's very self-explanatory, and you dial that in, and it, and it didn't take be long to get my head around that at all mm. no, and, that's, um, yeah, i agree with all that you know and, and, and the graphic presentation just seems to be a little bit cleaner or very simpler clean. or fresher yep. you know they made a point at the launch that husqvarna had been very conscious of the graphic representations and presentations there yeah. that they did restyle them and remake their own yeah. so yeah that's a fair call definitely i love the the diagram of the slip control yeah because, sure yeah right, you know right, yeah right, like slip yeah. control one yep. uh, and nine there's v virtually any movement it, yep. it, it's just diagrammatic just reminds people that's yeah. what that's about of course mate um yeah, but, and while you're talking slip control yeah. explorer mode yeah can you tell me i'm going to ask you this day who would not pay the 324 dollars to have you'd explorer be, mode you'd be nuts who would not 
you'd be nuts not to. No, exactly uh, right. Uh, to give you that traction control adjustability on the fly, yeah. that's, just, that's just such good technology. It and is. that's what sets this Norden apart from the KTMs too, mm. because mm. you get standard, you, you get the, the quick shifter yeah. and cruise control yeah. standard. That's right, whereas there are optionals in the different packages with the KTM, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah, so it, it's, you know, it, you, you've got to do an apples to apples comparo yeah. as a punter comparing a 901 to an 890R yeah. with those other options. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly true. Yeah, there's some definite sweeteners in the, yes. in the Husky range. Yeah, sure, sure. But that um, Explorer mode certainly gets there. But I did notice, and um, pull me up if I'm wrong, and you've had the proper briefing and tell mm. me if I'm right, the slip control on this, the slip control 3 on an 890 Adventure R, and the slip control 3 on this, it's a lot milder on this. Is that a um, I, I, I would agree, seat of the pants, yes. Seat of the pants it is, is it? Whether that's technically the case. Is it? Yeah, well, it, but it feels it, doesn't it? And yeah. I imagine, well, you know, surely it would be a relatively simple computer programming oh, yeah. telemetry oh, yeah. type situation. I, like, I think I'm going to be ringing Husky yeah, about I, that I, one. Because check on that one, but it certainly feels it from the back, from your seat, doesn't it? It, it certainly does. And to me, slip control one on this feels like slip control three on the Adventure R. Yeah. Me. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with yeah. that too. Fuel range is around 400 k's. Yeah. We, we got 400 k's out of the, just on 400 k's out of them on the launch ride. Yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah. I mean, it's good that, economy, that, mate. Yeah. So yeah. basically we've looped out from Sydney, we've gone way into to Yango National Park and we're looping back to Sydney now and I still think we've got 140 kilometres range or 120 yep, it's showing that, like that's that. what it's showing, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was pretty yeah. accurate on the launch ride, the, 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 the yeah. uh, fuel gauge, yeah. I mean, you know, range is one of the critical things for Australian adventure bike riders and 400 is just the stock mm. bog standard. Yep. You know, bikes need to have around 400k range. No, that's true mate. That's and the true. great thing is it's low. Yes, that's it. It's down there around your, your, your shins, isn't it, mate? Yeah. yeah. It's a good call, that rally design tank. Yeah, it's a no, really it's good brilliant. call. It's brilliant. Yeah. And everybody's fear about it hitting things and, like, catching on the obstacles. It's crap. Yeah, yeah. It just works. It does work. Seat height for you. So when you're sitting on that bike, if you sit on that bike now, you have your feet... Oh, in, in the low position, I have both feet on the ground easy. Right, In okay. the low position, yep. 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 Okay. So I'm the... I'm the so I'll just get on it for a sec. Yeah, so, yeah, so both feet, uh, you know, tip, 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 I'm on the balls of my feet. Yeah. 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 Which is really good, and that's on the low, mm -hmm. low seat setting. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing, you know, we saw the, uh, a number of bikes modify their designs this year to lower seat height, um, and, and this is another one, though, which is good. So, that's the standard bike. Then we come to the 270mm suspension. This takes this bike to another level. Mate. Um, you saw me today just flying over erosion mounds and you land and it's like landing on a cotton wool cloud and the poise of the bike and you know the suspension is just outstanding. I mean I want to be, it's nine grand, oh. but um, yeah it just takes the bike to another level because just like the standard one the fundamentals of handling are really strong to start yeah. off with oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and all we're doing is adding a very high quality suspension i've got to say i've i've the, the settings on these now the clickers and everything is fine by me oh, mate, that just worked a treat This concludes the first of this two-part series on my test of the Husqvarna Norden 901. I spent a couple of weeks on these bikes in a range of conditions, so I'm keen to share all that I've discovered and where I see this bike fitting into the world of motorcycle adventure. I hope you can join me next Sunday when I focus in detail on the features and benefits of the bike, discuss modifications I would do for Australian conditions, 
draw some conclusions and have some more fun answering subscribers questions and believe me there's a heap of them, there's about 50. In the meantime I've stuck a few bloopers at the end for those diehards. See you next week. Lobby. Well, then straight over him. <laughs> See him? You know... I, Did he keep going? Yeah. Fucking straight over his guts, mate. Yeah, I just want to tell you something. The other day when I was up here, first time in my whole career I ran over a goanna straight across its guts. Oh, it's bigger than that. No, it was like... Did mate. keep going, bud? Yeah, yeah, he's all right. Fucking bounce or what? No, and, and I ran my, mine over and Nick said, no, it's okay, kept going. You ran that one over. Same guy, you reckon? No, oh, he's got he two left fucking knobby tracks on him now. <laughs> oh. oh, I just thought. Same guy, you reckon? <laughs> no. <laughs> two sets of knobby tracks down his spine, the poor bloke. Oh. I think you got him just on the tail, actually. Oh, I feel like I rode over him. Oh, I hate running out hitting wildlife. Oh, no, you do, man. I feel terrible now. I never used to think of it. No. And I think, mate, you're on my tail. You'll be stopping there to give him bloody CPR and mouth to mouth, the poor little That's thing. right. You've seen me take the tortoises off the road. Uh. <laughs> I've just taken out the side stand spring. There's a stick. Oh yeah, that's not too that's not too bad. Okay, that's out. Now, I wonder if the gods are with us, the husky gods. Let's see if we can find the spring. Clubby's NRMA service. It's done alright. That's a heck of a call out for you, Dave. A long way from metropolitan area. Hey, but just as well we had a couple of zip ties stashed in the camelback, mate. Goodness me, be prepared. Which we're travelling light today, mate. Now somewhere in that stretch is a Husqvarna Norden side stand spring. And now, this is the saviour. Alright, got to be happy with that. Settings on these now, the clickers and everything, is fine by me. Oh, mate, that just worked a treat, didn't it? It yeah. really did. It just worked an absolute treat. In fact, there's fun. someone from suspension ringing up now to ask you about how Oh, it's Clive Ward calling. He probably wants oh, to know Clive. The, Clive, what to charge. Oh, that's a doggy, mate. Yeah. Clive's probably ringing up about the suspension. Oh, someone's already hit you. Uh, I'll put you down here. Oh, that's it. Oh. God, I can't pick you up. Here. Yeah, someone's already ran over you, mate. Now, oh, come on. Here we go. There you go. That's a leech you've got on you. Let me get him off. It's a leech. Alright, you're good now. Well, after that little fiasco, I thought I'd be stuck out here tonight and having uh, dinner with the leeches. Yeah, it is so slippery in the Wadigans at the moment and something that normally is just so easy to do and you find yourself being sucked into these huge gullies and that's what's happened to me today. But you know what? The beauty of this bike, these uh, rear hand guards here, these rear handles were just so good, you know. I, I just managed to manhandle the bike up. I was stuck in that rut. I wasn't going anywhere. And I just managed to 
you can see it there. Uh, I, I wasn't going anywhere. And I just manhandled the bike and lifted the back up and stuck it up there. But these conditions are so slippery. That, that left-hand line of the track you can see, you know, just here, just along there. If you go onto that, you're into that ditch. Absolutely guaranteed. It is so slippery. As the track gets rougher, Clubby's trail speed naturally drops. He's found the limits of the suspension. On the other hand, for me, <coughs> Jesus. Now that's a blooper. <laughs>